Every day, patients from around the world come to Boston to receive care at Brigham and Women's Hospital. The new Building for Transformative Medicine at the Brigham will bring researchers and clinicians in neurosciences, orthopedics, rheumatology, and immunology together under one roof to push the boundaries of medicine, accelerate breakthroughs, and dramatically improve care for patients everywhere. Wynne Thurber is the chairman of a successful international shipping firm who had a feeling something was wrong with him. Just felt terrible, just got just awful, just not good. He definitely said something was wrong with him. This went on for months. He said, I have to go to the hospital. That night, he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, an incurable but treatable cancer that was controlled for years with high doses of a maintenance drug until that drug made him sick. I took more Rituxin probably than anybody. He had actually been cured from his lymphoma, but at the same time, he had received many doses of rituximab and had what I diagnosed as a hypersensitivity reaction to it. By then, I'd been in a wheelchair. I now had uh, oxygen. He thought that he was not gonna make it. So she said, I don't know what it is, but I know what's gonna take you, if, we, if you get through this, I know what you need to do. And that was to stop taking a Rituxan, which I did not like the idea because I thought that's what was keeping me alive. The medication that actually cured you could kill you. Today, Wynn is living an active, healthy life, something he could not have imagined years ago. Because of my experience with Brigham and Women's and all the people there, but in particular, Dr. Castells, I'm alive today and I'm able to do what I do. Uh, if it wasn't for Brigham and Women's today, I don't know what I'd do. If he hadn't come to our uh, drug hep sensitivity and desensitization program at the Brigham, would probably not have made it. There is no other center in the world that is capable of taking care of such severe uh, reactions to medication and then able to reintroduce uh, medications or treatment for those medications in a way that patients can tolerate it. Respiratory therapist Terry Cicero spends her days caring for the most fragile patients, tiny babies. She didn't know her own health was also very fragile. A uh, first symptom was vertigo, and um, a few months later, six months later, I had numbness on my whole um, right side. Terry's symptoms would come and go, making diagnosis difficult. She traveled to Brigham and Women's Hospital and met Dr. Howard Weiner, who developed a treatment program for her multiple sclerosis. Sometimes in early stages, if uh, the doctor doesn't do the right tests, or people have symptoms that aren't clear, it can be hard to diagnose. Uh, some people we get too late, and when we see them, they've already had the disease for a while. So it's harder to prevent them from uh, becoming progressive. I was afraid of what this meant. I was afraid of being in a wheelchair. My children were toddlers. I was afraid of not being able to take care of them. So I wanted them to be able to to survive and, and learn, learn skills to take care of themselves. I remember walking down my driveway and just walk, looking around at the trees and thinking, I hope I get to do this for a long time. When you can treat the patients and you can give them hope, and when you're successful, and we're more and more successful, the patient doesn't have to worry about that. During the years of caring for Terry, Dr. Weiner suddenly discovered a plaque he was able to treat her with a new drug that reduced its size to a pinhead. So one of the things at our center are all the people and all the different levels of expertise that are thinking about MS. We'll have a conference, there'll be 30 people in the room, and we'll be talking about MS in a way that I don't know if it's talked about anywhere else. I just get a certain energy, a certain positive energy. I love being there, I just feel uh, all this intelligence around me. <laughs> Alexa Barato, a seemingly healthy 20-year-old college student, awakens one morning, her right knee massively swollen. It was so swollen that I couldn't walk. 48 hours later, all of my joints were so swollen that I was completely disabled. 
I couldn't hold my phone, I couldn't brush my teeth, I couldn't, and I had such a huge pain in my back as well. Well, initially, I thought she had rheumatoid arthritis, classical rheumatoid arthritis, which occurs in young people, women more commonly than men. I was 20 years old. I was a junior studying at Boston College. After an extensive evaluation, the diagnosis changed. Dr. Weinblatt realized that my disease was not rheumatoid arthritis, that it was behaving more like adult onset Stills disease. That um, unpredictability and that uncertainty of what she had was just a killer, it was just the worst feeling ever. Medicine was able to control her symptoms, but not the damage to her joints. It was actually quite traumatic. When Alexa came in, couldn't walk, in a wheelchair, we rolled around the corner, got her x-rays, showed that her hips had been destroyed, and literally I walked across the hall, knocked on the door of one of our senior hip surgeons. And he looked at my x-rays, at my MRI, and he said, well, it's done. You need, a hip, you need bilateral hip replacements. Here's a young person who develops what is really a fairly devastating disease process. And without treatment, I mean, results are terrible. My fear, my, my always, always my biggest fear is I can't control. So I don't know, I can go to bed one night feeling perfectly fine and I can wake up feeling awful. We have seen remarkable progress in the treatment of inflammatory arthritis, much of it coming out of our research and clinical laboratory experience here at the Brigham. Today, thanks to her treatment, Alexa is living a full life. She planned her dream wedding and is focused on her future, something she thought might never be possible. So my relationship with Dr. Weinblatt is amazing. I would say that he's basically been like an angel in my life. Wynn, Terry, and Alexa are just three of the many patients worldwide who have benefited from the breakthroughs that already take place at Brigham and Women's Hospital and the collaborations that will soar to even greater heights within the Building for Transformative Medicine. So I think this modern concept of research, bench research, and clinical research, and patient care coming together is the breakthrough of medicine. So that's going to improve ongoing interchange between the basic researchers, the clinical scientists, and the clinicians, which is only going to further our understanding of these diseases. There's really no limit to our energy or the amount of work we're willing to do to find a cure. We will cure these diseases. We're curing them now. Thank you.